folks, we're beginning a grand circle tour of the Magic Kingdom. With stops along the way in Frontierland and Fantasyland. Sit tight and keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs well inside the train. We're currently departing Main Street Station. And if you're missing those friendly faces already, not to worry. On this train, it's never goodbye. It's always see you real soon. Para su seguridad, permanezca sentado y mantenga las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del tren. Y cuide a los pequeños. Gracias. Friends, I'm so delighted you joined us today. There's nothing I enjoy more than showing folks around this magic kingdom, especially because it's certified proof that in these parts, dreams really do come true. See, there was a time not so long ago that I was just a young fella on Main Street with a balloon in my hand and a wish in my heart that someday I'd be the conductor of this train. And wouldn't you know it, with a bit of gumption and a dash of magic, here I am. So believe it when I say that around here, anything is possible. See what I mean? Hope you packed a compass, because that, folks, is the sound of adventure. <laughs> adventure land, I should say. With a navigation wild jungle rivers, swashbuckling with jolly buccaneers, or even just scaling a towering treehouse, there's always plenty to explore here in Adventure Land. This here's Frontierland, home to cowpokes, campfires, and country bears. This outpost is just full of hotels and all around. Or switch to the Catch a ride on its rumbling trains so and you'll see why. On a more musical note, just ahead I heard some little critters are moving in and looking to make a splash. Take a listen. We're almost there. We've reached Frontierland Station, everyone, so sit tight and hold those horses until we've come to a complete stop. If you're disembarking, please carry your strollers all the way off the platform before I'm hitting. All right, that's the all clear. Please watch ahead and watch your step up in a journey here at Magic Kingdom. This is Frontierland Station and your gateway to Adventureland.
What may I offer for these hearty heads? Everyone in England. Find the treasure without a look at this here map. And this lovely key to the treasure. <laughs> here I be, holding the treasure map and the key as well. What I would begin to see the room. Probably scared them off. I'm sure we'll figure it out. And uh, 
Oh, yes, I'm going to do it, guys. That is a python. You can tell it's not a boa because there are no feathers.
paintings here in this gallery. Here where you see paintings of some of our guests as they appeared in their corruptible mortal state. Kindly step all the way in, please, and make room for everyone. There's no turning back now. At this time, drag more bodies away from the walls, <laughs> lay them to rest in the dead center of the room. Oh. Your cadaverous power betrays an aura of formality, almost as though you sense a disquieting metamorphosis. Is this haunted room actually stretching? Or is it your imagination? <laughs> And consider this dismaying observation. This chamber has no windows and no doors. <laughs> I'm very right now. Which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out. <laughs> It's time to 
respond. Send us a message from somewhere beyond. have received your sympathetic vibration and are beginning to materialize. They're assembling for a swinging wind.
is the place to store. Also, your gateway to the rest of Fantasyland and Tomorrowland. Now, please wait until the train has come to a complete stop. Gather your juggling pins, unicycles, and other belongings, and carry your strollers away from the platform before unfolding. That way, we can start loading up for the next leg of our trip. For those who can watch, please watch your step and thanks for traveling with us. I hope you join us again real soon. If you're staying aboard, our next stop is Main Street Station. Alright, everybody, for your safety, please remain seated. Do not stand up in an exit the vehicle until they give you the all clear. Alright, that's the all clear.
Maple Wood. The East Wind treated this Thank you. 
the money? Ah, what a voice. What a beautiful voice. What? Let me tell you how that evil secret trick now you voice the way from
motorcycle run is a thrilling high-speed roller coaster type ride in the dark. Users be warned. Prepare to be digitized into the world of Tron.
is Star Traders, home to the greatest goods in the galaxy. Except that stars. Those are not our soul. Now approaching Tomorrowland Speedway and Tron Light Cycle Run. I love a good circuit, and these are two of the best tracks in the cosmos for a bit of light, speedy competition.
Progress was Walt's own idea from beginning to end. He loved it. He introduced the show at the World's Fair in New York City in 1964, and it was an immediate smash hit. Millions of people came to see it. And since then, the Carousel of Progress has had more performances than any other stage show in the history of American theater. You know, Walt loved the idea of progress, and he loved the American family. And he himself was probably as American as anyone could possibly be. He thought it would be fun to watch the American family go through the 20th century, experiencing all the new wonders as they came. And he put them together in a show called Carousel of Progress, which we are now about to see. Although our Carousel family has experienced a few changes over the years, our show still revolves around the same theme, and that's progress. May the century begin. 
There's a great big beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of everywhere Just a dream away Yeah, it looks like the Robins are getting ready to celebrate Valentine's Day today. What year is it? Oh, right around the turn of the century. And believe me, things couldn't be any better than they are today. Yes, sir, buildings are towering now as high as 20 stories. And moving pictures flicker up on a big screen. We have almost 8,000 automobiles in this country, and we can travel by train from New York to California in less than seven days. And I even hear tell about two brothers from North Carolina who are working on some kind of flying contraption. <laughs> It'll never work. Closer to home, we've now got gas lamps, a telephone, and the latest design in cast iron stoves. And that reservoir keeps five gallons of water hot and just three buckets of coal. Oh boy, it sure beats chopping wood. And isn't our new ice box a beauty? Look at that, holds 50 pounds of ice. Milk doesn't sour as quick as it used to. And our dog Rover here keeps the water in the drip pan from overflowing. It wasn't too long ago we had to carry water from a well. And thanks to progress, we've got a pump right here in the kitchen. Of course, we keep a bucket of water handy to prime it with. Yes, sir, we've got everything we need to make life easier. Say, Mother, I was reading about a fellow named Tom Edison who's working on an idea for snap-on electric lights. Electric lights? No more kerosene, no more gas. <laughs> Sarah sure gets to the core of the apple. But we do have this new wash day marvel. Now it takes me only five hours to do the wash. Imagine, it used to take two days. <laughs> well, that's right, folks. Now Sarah has time for other things like... Like canning uh, and cleaning the oven. Yes, dear. Well, the stove just clean himself, you know. I know, dear. <laughs> and they probably never will. Now, if you'll excuse me. Off the line before it starts raining cats and dogs. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Don't worry, Rover. She didn't mean real dogs. Besides, it's not going to rain today. My lumbago isn't acting up. I'm not going to say I told you so. Oh, we got to come down. All you have to do is put your wash on the line, right? Oh, well, the cistern was low anyway. Wow, we look at that. Now, James, I thought I told you to ask my permission before using my new stereoscope. That's not a toy, you know. Ooh la la, so that's little Egypt doing the hoochie-coochie, eh, Dad? Isn't she a knockout? She's the star of the New World's Fair in St. Louis, and... <clears throat> now, you put that away before your mother finds it. Aw, oh, Dad! You heard me. Well, we have one of those new talking machines. Now, that is something. It plays music right here in our home. Yes, Patricia? Papa, all these people. I'm, I'm indecent. <laughs> Don't worry, Patricia. They're friends. That's our teenage daughter. She's getting ready to go to a Valentine's dance across town on one of those new horseless trolleys. I think it's very romantic you're taking Mother out for Valentine's dinner this evening. Well, you know what kind of sport I am. I only hope I have an evening as romantic as yours and Mother's. Now, you be home by 9 o'clock, daughter, you hear me? Yes, Father. Oh, well, with all this talking, I've worked up quite a thirst. <laughs> I think I'll take one of those newfangled trolleys down to the drugstore soda fountain and meet the boys for a cold sarsaparilla. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I forgot. We're drinking root beer now. Same kind of thing, different name. Well, that's progress for you. And uh, speaking of progress, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day It's a dream come true for you and me So there's a great big beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day There's a great big beautiful tomorrow Just a dream away Phew, boy, hottest 4th of July we've had in years. We've come a long way, though, since the turn of the century, over 20-some-odd years ago. You know that pilot fella, Charles Lindbergh? He's about to fly a single-wing airplane all the way across the Atlantic. <laughs> He's never going to make it. And sports stadiums are springing up all over. 
And boy, nobody hits that old horse hide like that new fella Babe Ruth. Jazz music is the cat's meow. And there's been ads in the paper for months for a movie starring Al Jolson. And he's going to talk and sing. Oh, boy, I've got to see that. <laughs> there goes Schwartz in his upmobile. He sure loves that horn. You know, in my new Essex, I've got an electric starter. Now I don't have to crank. We can travel from New York to Los Angeles by train in only three days. And we've got a house full of new electrical servants. Mr. Edison sure added life to our home. <laughs> There, you'll blow a fuse. Crap, that's the third one this week. I buy fuses by the case. Uh oh, and I blow the whole neighborhood again. Easy, Rover. Jimmy, hurry up with that fuse. Shucks, every time he has company, he blows a fuse. And guess who always has to change it? I heard that, young man. I heard that. Oh, well, that's more like it. John, yours is the last costume I've got to finish before the parade starts. Sarah's Ladies Club is responsible for our town's 4th of July celebration tonight. She's got us all roped into performing in their program. And I've I... decided we're going as George and Martha Washington, dear. Oh, the father of our country. <laughs> that's a role that really fits me. You know, I'm I... so glad we installed an electric light fixture here on the porch because it's just too darn hot to be sewing inside. Yes, Sarah. You know, next year I'd like to go as Benedict Arnold. And Wait I... until you see what I've got <laughs> planned for the fireworks show tonight. Rover, don't interrupt while Sarah's interrupting. And guess who volunteered to choose the music for the program? I did, Pop. Listen to this. <laughs> Oh, that's a nice tune, Jimmy. You know, with our new Crossley radio set, we can get news and big-time entertainment from all over the country, even Pittsburgh. We're starting to arrive downtown for a spectacular 4th of July parade and fireworks event. Oh, Patricia. Yes, Father. Better get a move on. The radio says folks are arriving downtown. Do I really have to go? If my new boyfriend, Theodore, sees me in this, it'll scare him away. Well, dear, if that happens, you'll always have that torch you can carry for him. <laughs> oh, father. Calm down, Rover. I was only kidding. By the way, we have indoor plumbing now. Oh, boy, that's really great on cold nights, especially for our perennial house guest, old Uncle Orville. <laughs> Uncle Orville's taken over the coolest spot in the house, of course, and he's rigged up a real clever contraption. He calls it air cooling. <laughs> Too bad he's not reading the help wanted ads. No privacy at all around this place. Sorry, Orville. You know, considering all the... Oh, coming, Martha, as I was saying. Considering all the conveniences we now have, I'll say that we're really on easy street these days. It just can't get any better. Just goes to show that there's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow Shining at the end of every day There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow Just a dream away Well, it's another Halloween here in the fabulous 40s. Everything is better than ever now. And we've got some amazing new wonders around the house to prove it. For instance, our refrigerator holds more food and ice cubes. And thanks to our automatic dishwasher, oh, I don't have to dry the dishes anymore after supper. Gives Rover and me more time to enjoy our evening stroll together. <laughs> Later, boy. Oh, and here's something else that's new. I just heard a new term today on the radio. Fella says, we've got something now called the rat race. Did you ever hear that one? It sure describes my life. I'm involved in something now called commuting. I drive into the city for work all day and then turn right around and drive all the way back. And the highway is crowded with fellow rats doing the same thing. That's what they call progress, dear. <laughs> yeah, I guess she's right. But we do have television <laughs> when it works. Gives you something to do after you come home. I kind of like it, you know? 
guy named John Cameron Swayze gives us all the news. And then they have all this singing and dancing, a lot of fluff, but it's fun. You know, I predict the day when millions of people will learn Latin and Greek sitting in front of their TV sets. Are you awake, Dennis? <laughs> Give him a left, you big lord. Ah, yes, a new age of electronic civilization is upon us. Hey, Dad, what do you think of my jack o lantern Oh, oh, boy, that's scary. That's because I'm using my beautiful sister Patty's picture for a model. <laughs> Down, Rover. Jim, Rover appreciates your joke. Now, you're always kidding poor Patty. She's certainly prettier than either of you. Oh. You hear that? My daughter Patty is using that old exercise machine she rescued from the attic. It was all a rage in the 20s. Grandma, of course, had to have one. Didn't work then, doesn't work now. <laughs> Consistent, at least. Makes a lot of noise and blows fuses. As I was saying, Dad, I think college is really swell. You should give it a try. Oh, Patty, are you going to the Halloween party tonight? Oh, yes. And I'm probably going to lose a few more inches by then, since I'm going with that dream boat. Oh, poor Howard. I wonder what they said about me when I was dating Sarah. <laughs> You're lucky, Rover. You don't have to date. Well, we're caught up in the do-it-yourself craze these days. We're remodeling our basement of something called a, a rumpus room, and we're looking forward to a few rumpuses, I'll tell you, as long as they don't get out of hand. John, this papering is getting out of hand. I could use a little help. Now, Sarah, didn't I set up that clever automatic paint stirring machine for you? Yes, John, you're a genius. Of course, this will ruin my food mixer. Not that you'd care. Oh, good old Sarah. Always the last laugh. <laughs> what happened, Sarah? Oh, you and your progress. That paint mixer of yours just sloshed paint across my rump. A rumpus, a room. <laughs> Now, how do you like that? I always say if you're going to be married, marry a girl with a sense of humor. Well, it's time to move on. Let's cheer up Sarah by singing our song. Come on, everybody. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. So there's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Shining at the end of every day. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. Just a dream away. Isn't it a pleasant holiday? No, oh, turkey's in the oven, it's peaceful and quiet. Yes! 300 points, my best score yet. Well, it was peaceful until Santa brought that new virtual reality space pilot game. Your turn, Grandma. Let's switch the image over to the TV so the resident flying ace can show you how it works. Now, it's a little tricky. Just use your game glove to fly behind the other guy and blast him with your laser blaster. Laser blaster? Well, I'll give it a try. Take a look around, Grandma. You're in the ship. Feels like I'm really there. Okay, get ready. You're about to blast off. Here goes nothing. Whoa. All right, here it comes. Oh, you missed him. Hey, everybody. I'm done programming our new voice activation system. Now all our household items will do anything we tell them to do. Great. Hell, a refrigerator bring me a roof beer. Well, it can't quite do that. But I'll show you something it can do. Three lights, 30% brighter. Oh, that's no big deal. Anybody can do that voice activated stuff. Watch this. Robert, sweet. John, the oven should respond to your voice commands now. Give it a try. Okay, here goes. Temperature to 375. Reminds me of certain people I know. Yeah, right, Dad. You gotta lose him, Grandma. Bank to the right. Remember Dad's turkey last year? Yeah, I think. <laughs> really smoked up the place when it burned, didn't it? We ended up microwaving frozen pizzas. Well, no need to worry about the turkey this year. Not with an oven that will do anything your father tells it to do. Ooh, good shot. 
Did you see that? Dad, Grandma's up to 550 points. Did you say 550? Hey, she's getting the hang of that thing. I can't believe all the new gadgets they've got now. You know, in my day. Oh, no. You're not going to tell us about the old days when you didn't even have a car phone. Hey, Trish. For a while, we didn't even have a house phone. Not to mention laser discs, high def TV. Everything is automated today, including. Well, no privacy is all around this place. Sorry, Orville. Anyway, you guys don't know how good you got it nowadays. You know, my grandpa told me the very same thing when I was a kid. Take that, you nincompoop! Hey, check it out, Dad. Grandma's up to 975 points. Wow, 975? <laughs> John, what's wrong with the oven? What, uh, uh... Big mode complete. Enjoy your meal. Anyone for pizza? Oh, another Christmas turkey ruined. <laughs> Man, what a game. I nearly smoked those guys. Looks like I'm resident flying ace now. Best two out of three, Grandma. Later, kid. Boy, that was fun. What will they think of next? Who knows? We've got a whole new century waiting for us out there. Yeah, and maybe sometime in the new century, your father will learn how to talk to our oven. Well, maybe by then ovens will read our minds. But hey, as long as we're all here and happy and together for the holidays, who cares if I burned our Christmas turkey? I do. I'm starving. <laughs> Don't worry, Dad. Someday everything's going to be so automated, you won't ever have to cook another Christmas turkey again. Thank you for joining us on Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. We hope you've enjoyed this tribute to the 1964 Carousel of Progress from the New York World's Fair. Please gather all of your personal belongings and exit through the doors located at the back of the theater. Have a great big beautiful day. And remember, tomorrow is just a dream away.
stay behind. Now let's move ahead to ancient Egypt, because something is about to happen here that will change the future forever. Thank you. 
in history. All of us can have a say about the kind of world we want to live in. The choices we have made for the past 30,000 years have been inventing the future one day at a time. And now, it's your turn. Let's have some fun creating the future, shall we? On your computer screen, answer a few questions for us. Then we'll show you a new world, custom made just for you. Ready? And now I believe your future is just about ready. Let's take a look, shall we? Welcome to the future. Or should I say, your future. Here in your future, getting away on vacation is a breeze. Your smart suitcase knows where you're going and what you'll need. Fueling station, you're off. You won't have to worry about your pets while you're gone, thanks to handy household robots. You'll leave your city home in an ultralight, ultra powerful, totally networked family car that can take you anywhere. You've already planned the trip with your virtual travel agent. Hotels, check. Restaurants, check. Guided tours, check. You'll never get bored on the journey because your car's holographic gaming technology keeps you connected to friends back home. You travel quickly and safely to places you can't imagine visiting today. And the moment you arrive at your ultimate vacation destination, you're out of this world and into the future. say the beginning of your future. So here's to the next 30,000 years on Spaceship Earth. While no one knows for sure what we'll see or do, I do know it will be quite an adventure. An adventure that we'll take and make together. See you in the future. Welcome back, time travelers. Now, we invite you to visit Project Tomorrow, where new ideas and innovations are being developed to make the world a better place. Your vehicle doors will open automatically. Please keep your hands away from the doors and step carefully onto the moving platform. of Xandar. As you have seen, your world and ours were born of the same moment, one which you refer to as the Big Bang. As such, we are all galactic neighbors in a vast universe which we and countless others share. For you to travel to Xandar would take two and a half million years, assuming you had a ship that could fly at the speed of light. So we decided to come to you. But even we could not have reached you so easily were it not for the Cosmic Generator, an advanced piece of Xandarian technology that creates jump points, artificial tunnels that act as shortcuts linking distant points in space. 
it is our desire to share this wondrous technology with your people so that together we might explore new worlds and create a brighter tomorrow. And now, as the culmination of the wonders of Xandar, you will be teleported to a Nova ship above your planet for a demonstration of the Cosmic Generator. I trust you will find it an unforgettable experience. Welcome, people of Epcot, Epcotters, Epcotians, citizens of Epcot. Does anyone know what they call themselves? What? I'm on? Someone needs to tell me when I'm on. Welcome, Epcot Terrans. I am Centurion Tal Merrick, and we're just about ready to teleport you up to the ship for the demonstration. As you're about to enter a secure Nova area, I must ask you to put away your Terran communication devices at this time. Recording of any type is strictly prohibited. I am very serious about this. <laughs> now, please step forward into the chamber. You're gonna love this. Someone did not stand where I told them to, okay? Stand by for teleportation. Here we go. You made it. I mean, of course you did. Noah Prime, they're ready. Excellent. For yourself. What's happening? I'm not sure. Our power's out. And the cosmic generator's gone. Jerry Amard, go to Code Red. Prepare the fleet. And call the Martins. Now! There is no cause for alarm. Turn off that alarm. I've got an important transmission coming in. Hey, what's up, Noah Corp? Our cosmic generator has been stolen. What? How? What did we figure that? That thing's got to be worth a fortune. I am Groot. Yeah, who do you think took it? Perhaps that really big man outside your ship. Oh, that is a big man. I need to alert Nova Prime. I have been watching Terrans from the gods. I'm not there yet. This species has failed. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. We didn't even know there was a test. It's not a cosmic generator. We created a new jump point. Jump point to where? Not where. It's no good a new jump point. Time. Time, why? To erase some error. Well, that doesn't sound good. Your time is over. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? What do you mean it's so many? The time point is closing. Hey, no, you. You know we're going to follow that, that whatever it is until we get there. We can't. Our power is down, and I've got to get these Terrans onto evacuation shows. I got it. I've been booking the shuttles to follow them through the jump point. What? Look, well, they're our only chance of keeping track of that whack job until we get the cosmic generator back. He's a king. What? Where's the king? Where's the king? The odds are impossible. Yep. But it's our only shot. Good luck. Are you sure you can control it? Come on, it's me. We got this. We're all toast. First, it was kid. Now there's toast. Spinners are making me so hungry. Terrence, listen up. You need to make your way to the evacuation shuttles now. We'll follow the fleet and get our power back. I mean, when we get our power back. No, I would only go home. Okay, they're headed for the jump point. This plane is never gonna work. Rock it! Yeah. Well, okay, I've walked onto your vehicle. We'll be right behind you. Nothing to worry about. Unless we cannot stop this unusually large man. And you're likely doomed. Way back. All 
the way to the Big Bang? Space Shuttle. It's powered by solid hydrogen and can accelerate from zero to 6,000 in 60 seconds. So when you hear the words go for launch, you'll definitely want to hang on. Now you've already been organized into teams, and soon each of you will be assigned a position. Navigator, pilot, commander, or engineer. The success of your mission will depend on all of you working together as a team. I'll be your Capcom. And in a few minutes, I'll give you your specific assignments. But first, our flight director has some safety instructions for you. Lieutenant? Remember the team number you're standing on. When the doors in front of you open, you will be directed to a flight station with that number on it. When you get there, please stand on the circles. During your orange team more intense training mission, you will be enclosed inside X-2 flight simulators and produce deep space flying conditions such as turbulence and g-forces. Those who are prone to motion sickness or made uncomfortable by enclosed dark spaces, simulators or snowmen should bypass this experience. As you can see, astronaut flight training isn't like anything you've ever experienced before. It is intense. And if you would like to opt so out, just ask any member of the ISTC I keep hearing the test. See That's you the rest of you. Okay. Don't throw up on me. I mean, we shouldn't have went to France. It's going to be. Hey, Chris, there's 
vehicle designs perform under challenging weather and surface conditions. Monitoring road surface. Let's see how your designs hold up now. Commencing sim car off-road and extreme weather sequence. Capability test results displayed and verified. Now let's see how your vehicles compare when it comes to their efficiency. Sound, 
tastes like chicken. Can I go? Please, please, please. No, I don't want you out of my sight. Out of sight? Okay. Come on, everybody. Here we go. Figment, you are not to interfere with the tour. Our first stop is the sound plan. We'll begin by testing your hearing with a series of tones. Left ear, right ear. Left, right. What? This is on. Um, hello? Hello? Who is this? It's Figment. Figment? I thought I told you not to interfere. But you've got it wrong, Doc. It's not about listening with your ears. It's about listening with your imagination. <laughs> now I've completely lost my train of thought. No, you haven't. Come on in! 
pigment. And so, as you can plainly see, imagination works the best when it's set free. You said it, Doc! Imagination is a blast! systems of our planet. One of 
of those living systems is the rainforest, home to the most amazing concentration of life on our planet. These dense and beautiful forests cover only a tiny portion of the Earth's surface, but they contain more than half of its plant and animal species. Rainforests are also extremely rich in productive living systems, providing us with oxygen, food, medicines, and other elements essential to our lives. In the desert, nature has created a very different, but no less beautiful, living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert, but over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. at work on the land, humans have had one of the most profound effects. The need to produce food for a growing world led to the enormous use and sometimes overuse of the land. In our search for more efficient ways to grow food, we often fail to realize the impact of our methods. Today, we're learning to live with the land, discovering better ways to grow food that will assure both human and environmental well-being. In Japan, we learn that by mixing leaves and other living materials into our soil, we can make farmland more fruitful without the need for chemicals. Here at Epcot, we're learning to reduce the need for chemical pesticides by breeding and using them for predators, like ladybugs and wasps, to control pests. In the farmlands across America, we're learning that by planting under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil without the use of chemicals. In arid regions, we're learning to produce food on desert sea coasts How will we meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land? Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. To help us maintain these carefully controlled ecosystems, and for your safety, please remain seated in your boat at all times. Welcome to our living laboratory, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future.
The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee and rice, are well known around the world. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. One day, many of these lesser-known tropical plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. in the world, most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase yields of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like these increase yields while more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer, and pesticides. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Don't 
Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses in restaurants here at the land every year. The future of agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponic system on your left combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, EPCOT scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. The goal of these efforts is to produce higher yielding and better quality plants. ways to increase food production and protect our precious natural environment. Only then will we truly be living with the land. On behalf of Walt Disney World, we hope you've enjoyed this unique journey through our living laboratory. If you'd like a closer look, then check out the Behind the Scenes Walking Tour. It's a chance for the whole family to get up close and personal with the plants and growing techniques in our laboratory. These greenhouses represent just a fraction of the work being done in worldwide in size without the harvest for our growing population. Scientists, Farmers and even backyard gardeners are doing their part to improve the quantity and quality of foods that we all rely upon. Together, we can continue to find more ways to increase food production and protect our precious natural environment. Only then will we truly be living with the land. of Walt Disney World. We hope you've enjoyed this unique journey through our living laboratory. If you'd like a closer look, then check out the Behind the Scenes Walking Tour. It's a chance for the whole family to get up close and personal with the plants and growing techniques in our laboratory. Please keep your hands and feet inside the boat and remain seated until the boat comes to a complete stop.
Nemo! All science is great, there's so much to know. I'm a border explorer, it's time to go. Yes, have you seen him? I am Lori. I am looking for my son. Ooh, I can help. Oh, 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 where? No, that's my kind of fun. I do. Oh, 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 oh,
para su seguridad, permanezca sentado y mantenga las manos de la
this here Loki motive?
nothing was gonna go wrong.
One stormy night long ago, five people stepped through the door of an elevator and had one nightmare. That door is opening once again, and this time, it's opening for you. corner of the imagination in the Tower of Terror.
secret base, and I will take it from you. We are needed on the bridge. Keep the prisoners here. I will return to finish this personally. inside the transport and supervise your children. <laughs> Tell them it's a prisoner transfer. <laughs> Did it work? Good. Now get a move on. There's a clear path to the turbo lifts at the end of the hallway. Turn right. <laughs> a probe droid. You're lucky it didn't spot you. Take those turbo lifts and stay out of trouble. Hey, you're not authorized. Wait, go for the prisoners. We have a breach in the touching Your cover is blown. Find an alternate route. Who picked these two droids anyway? Detention block breach. Prisoners lost seen on there. another way down to the escape pods. The resistance will attempt to rescue the prisoners. They have neither the resources nor the courage to engage us. You underestimate their conviction. Raise the shields. Shields? I see no evidence. Now! Down the alarm. All personnel to their stations. Sir, the prisoners have escaped. How brave. But ultimately hopeless. There's nowhere to run. Ground crews will meet you outside the wreck. 
<laughs> All right, nice job, recruits. Not what you signed on for, but hey, you're resistance now. I think I have that authority. Right, Beck? Where's the lieutenant? I need eyes on Beck. I know. Scaffer is caught, Beck. We're tracking Beck's pod at the wreckage, sir. It's Wreckage? I've got a bad feeling about this. No, sir. He came down to the wreckage site. That doesn't sound good. He was the backbone of this operation. If anything happened to him, it... Stan's last show him in Sector 4. Should have waited for him. Sir, you have no choice. You had to get those data tanks off the ship. Yes, you got one! 
I've never seen that human before. Oh dear. Gotta go! Oh, be a fool. Yeah. You are no match for the power of the dark side. your safety restraints by pressing the release button on your left. Make sure you have all your personal belongings as you exit. Thank you for flying Star Tours. Bye bye Can everyone see me? Great. Welcome to the Avatar program. Soon, you're going to have a chance to undertake an amazing Navi rite of passage, flying on the back of this powerful animal called an Ikron, or as we call it, a Banshee. The way you're going to do this is by being matched to something called an Avatar. And I'm here to help you guys get ready. But first, we have to scan you for Pandoran microparasites. All right, everyone, stay on your number and move your arms a bit. Okay, start scan. Start scan. Ah, you've all 
got them. <laughs> but don't worry, uh, they're very common around these parts. Uh, let's start the decon. Initiating GMR decon. Stand still over your number, you're not gonna feel a thing. You're doing great. Almost done. You're all clear. Great. Now let's go over how all this works. Like I said before, you're going to be matched to these things called avatars, which look a lot like the Na'vi. They're created by blending human DNA and Na'vi DNA. Once we match you to an avatar, thanks to a special link chair, your mind will be able to control that avatar. Using avatars to fly this way was all figured out by my boss, Dr. Jackie Ogden. She leads our science team, which is part of the Pandora Conservation Initiative, and we're here in the Valley of Moara studying banshees and their environment. Over a generation ago, this enormous company called the RDA created a lot of damage to the area through their bad mining practices and conflicts with the Na'vi. Just like on Earth, it can take decades for ecosystems to recover. One way to understand what's going on with an ecosystem is to study what are called keystone species. These are animals like tigers, jaguars, seals. The banshee is one of these important animals. Okay, to get you flying on a banshee, we need to find each of you an avatar. Um, let's uh, prep the genetic sampling. I'm on it. Okay, um, first we need to find the compatible match of your genetic material with the genetic material of one of the avatar bodies that we already have. Once we do that, you'll be able to link to that avatar and uh, fly. <coughs> Help us out and move around the bear. Almost. Yes, got him. Now, let's find you your avatar matches. All right, you've all been matched with avatars. Uh, ooh, looks like they're ready for you in the next room. Uh, when the door opens, please go inside, all the way in, and stand over the same number that you're standing over now. And, uh, and I'll see you in there. Before we send you to the link chamber, let's watch this piece by Dr. Ogden, who runs the program. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. Jackie Ogden from the Pandora Conservation Initiative. You're about to experience a ceremony that's very special to the Navi, flying on the back of an Ikron, or as we call it, a banshee. To the Navi, connecting to an Ikron and flying on its back is an incredibly important rite of passage they call Ikni Maya. With permission from the Navi and in partnership with Alpha Centauri Expeditions, we can now bring this amazing experience to you. The way you'll be able to fly is by linking to an avatar that's already on the back of an Ikron. Let's see how this works. We establish a link using powerful psionic amplification equipment. A human driver is connected to an avatar, which could be physically hundreds of kilometers away. When you follow our technician into the link chamber, you'll see a series of 16 link chairs. Please go to the number that matches the number you're standing on now. First, stow your gear in the storage containers on the back wall. This should include all bags, cameras, and other items, including cell phones. It's important to push them all the way into the bin. Then get onto the chair as you would a bike. Straddle the seat, step forward, and sit down. Slide your hips forward until you are against the chest pad, and then move your feet all the way forward. Wait until you're seated before you put on your flight visors. Hold onto the hand grips as shown. It's important to hold on to the hand grips at all times. After you're seated, back and leg restraints will be firmly engaged. For your safety, throughout this entire experience, always remain seated and supervise your children. Once the link takes place, you'll be connected to your avatar and sitting on the back of an Ikron. It'll feel like you're really there. Moments later, you'll begin your flight. A Navi guide will lead you out. You'll experience the breathtaking beauty of Pandora but you might also face some of its greatest challenges. Some of this flight might be intense, but trust your guide and be brave. As the Navi say during this important rite of passage, Steve Ako, rise to the challenge. Good luck. All right, you ready? Let's get you into the link chamber. You will be
seatbelts buckled up. You can reach down to the left pull over the right pull on the yellow safety top. Make sure it's nice and secure for me. If you have looking around, could definitely stop looking for your non-existent seatbelt. You didn't need to look for. But a few of you are still looking for that one anyways. With that being said, the friends, I need every single one of you, and I do mean every single one of you to remain fully seated the entire time from start to finish. Even if the truck comes to a full and complete stop, or if an animal's hard for you to see, do not stand up at any point in any way, shape, or form. Remain fully seated with all your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the truck. Now, we are starting off here in the Little Literary Forest, and the animal on the hill out to the right was the Okapi. Thanks to their black and white stripes, many people think they're related to the zebras, but they are going to be the closest and only living relatives to the giraffes. The little white bird walking down there on the left side is a saddle built stork. It gets its name thanks to the yellow saddle shaped piece at the very top of its beak. Those birds can stand up to about 5 feet tall with a 7 to 9 foot wide wingspan. If you, it looks like he's moving. If you pay attention out there to the left, you can kind of see that black rhino way up there in the back corner. Wait, I do see it. We're going to see if the other one starts there. making his way out. Uh, black rhinos are one of two rhino species on our reserve. They're going to be the smaller of the two, weighing in at about 3,000 pounds, each one fully grown. They are very territorial, so they are solitary, except for when they're young and they'll stay with their mothers for just the first couple of years. My parents, those of you with your little ones, you're more than welcome to have your little ones seated on your lap, but they do need to remain seated on that same exact lap the entire time. So please don't move them from your lap to a seat, from a seat to a lap, from one lap to another lap. Don't go passing them from one end of the row to the other end of the row. Don't pass them to a different row. Don't let them stand on your lap, and please don't hold them up into the air. You are not Rafiki. Your child is not Simba, so don't be not lagging on my truck this morning. For those of you taking photos, you're more than welcome to take as many as you like as it is quite the photo-friendly safari. We'll be able to stop for some animals. We cannot stop for them all. I guarantee you that they don't really stop for us, and when we do stop, it is not for very long. So I do highly recommend you have your cell phone or camera out ready to go. Put it in a sports mode, an action mode, something with a higher shutter speed setting. So that will help you get your clearer photo as we're moving along. Out to the left side are the Nile hippopotamus. They generally spend the majority of their day fully submerged under the water. So that's going to help to keep them from overheating. They are able to hold their breath for about 8 to 12 minutes at a time, depending on their size. And after that, they come up just briefly for a quick breath of fresh air and they go right back under the water. My friends, if you're not doing so already, please make sure you are holding on to all of your loose items nice and tight. If you do happen to drop anything off my truck, 
we're all gonna be waving goodbye to that item together as I'm not allowed to stop for it. If you do happen to drop something, just let me know and I'll get a hold of the correct person to get your item before an animal does, as they do tend to be quite curious. But I can guarantee you if, and that's a very big if, and when you get it back, be late this evening, if not tomorrow afternoon, it definitely will not be in the same condition as it was before I fell off this truck. Now take a look down to that left side again and you'll find the Nio crocodiles out there. They are the largest crocodilian species in all of Africa, reaching lengths of over 16 feet long. They can weigh up to be well over 500 pounds and eat half their body weight in just one feeding, which is roughly about 250 pounds of food at one time. And they are opportunistic feeders, which means that they will eat anything at any moment that appears in front of them in their reverse. But they do only need to eat once a week, and they're more than capable of going months at a time without eating anything at all. Now, friends, lastly, for all your safety info, as we head on over to the savannah, as I do today, everyone, to remember, we are, in fact, visitors here in the animal's home. And while, yes, I know it is quite exciting to see all these animals, we do need to be respectful of them at all times, and that does mean keeping voices down to a lower, quieter, indoor voice. They've been a little too loud, so try and bring those volumes down just a smidge for me, but absolutely no shouting or screaming. And please don't try to get the animal's attention in any way. So no whistling sounds, no kissing sounds, no barking, no howling, roaring, goat noises, straight noises, snapping your fingers, clapping your hands, or anything else you can possibly think of to try and get the animal's attention. As they don't really like it, they'll just move further away from the truck, and that's not what anyone wants. As we do start off in the savannah, we'll see a couple of our wildebeest out there in that right corner. Wildebeest outside of humans are the largest congregating herd of mammals we'd be able to find. You'd be able to see upwards of 1.5 million of them migrating the savannah grasslands together at any one point in time. They do like to run in a zig and zag type like pattern and they're capable of running up to about 1,000 miles in distance before they need to stop for a rest. They like to follow water sources so they love to chase storms and clouds. The animals in the savannah know that when they need to find water they can follow the wildebeest and they'll lead them directly to it. Out to the left side will be our African painted dogs. Now the African painted dogs will be getting their name thanks to the local markets that are all over their coats. They are going to be the most successful hunters in all of Africa with a 90% success rate because they work together as a team and they chase their prey to the prey so long able to stand. They're also quite the caring pack of animals as they feed their young, sick, and elderly first before anyone else in their pack is allowed to eat. On the hill here to the left will be some sable antelopes, who are in the top 10 largest of the species. What is that? Those horns on their heads can also reach lengths about four to six feet long, and they're spread down and back to create a great deterrent against any of the predators who may attempt to jump up onto their backs. The zebras we're going to be seeing here on the reserve are going to be Hartman Mountain zebras. And they're more known for the thicker, broader, wider stripes that are on their back legs. They have some broader water, wider hind hooves, which will help them to navigate the savannah terrain a bit easier. They're going to be the only zebra species with an extra flap of skin underneath their necks, known as a dewlap flap, and that's going to help out with thermal regulation. My friends, I need everyone to remember we cannot make any animal noises to those animals. They do not like it, and I do need your volumes to come down. We are being way too loud right now. I know it's exciting, but everyone also still wants to hear as well. And if we're too loud, we can't hear the speakers. Now the zebra, the Hartman Mountain zebras are gonna be the only zebra species with this extra flap of skin underneath their necks, which is known as a dewlap flap. And that's gonna help out with thermal regulation. And unlike horses who like to be in winning for communication, the zebras prefer to use a series of snorts and chucks. And they're gonna throw their body languages into it to really get their point across. To the left here, we'll see one of our Maasai giraffes. Yeah. And Maasai giraffes are more known for the rough jacket-like patterns 
that are all over their coats. Those patterns of theirs reach from the top of their head down to the bottom of their feet. A giraffe is going to be the tallest animal on land, reaching heights of 18 to 20 feet tall. And they're going to have a great head start on this height as they are born at nearly 6 feet tall, with the 6 foot drop down to the earth as mom does give birth while standing up. A 6 foot drop is very important for them though as it is what's going to help to get their hearts and lungs going by clearing out all the fluid from inside. And giraffes do have extremely long prehensile tongues. Prehensile meaning finger-like. Most tongues of theirs can reach lengths of about 2 to 3 feet long, but will generally average to be about 20 inches, which is the rough length of an adult forearm. They're going to be spending a majority of their entire day doing absolutely nothing else but eating, and by that, I mean they spend about 22 hours every single day just eating but in their defense, they do have four stomachs. Come into elephant country here, but take a look to the left on the hill, and you'll see one of our mandrels walking around. The mandrels are the largest monkey species there are. Males, they can reach up to be about 100 pounds when fully grown. They're pretty well known for those blue and red markings on their faces, which will get brighter with the more excitement that they get. They'll have some cheek pockets inside their mouths, which allow them to store an entire day's worth of food inside. through these red clay walls. That's where the elephants like to take those ivory tusks of theirs. They love to dig into the red clay, as you can see all along the wall here on this right side. That allows them to get a hold of minerals and nutrients they aren't able to find anywhere else. They are going to be the largest animals on the reserve, weighing in at about 15,000 pounds, each one fully grown. They have some extremely large ears, which you continue to grow with them as they grow their ears do a lot more for them than just allowing them to hear very well. Each of their ears are going to be packed full of blood vessels and they can flap those ears back and forth to create an ear current that allows them to cool their body temperatures down by about 15 degrees Fahrenheit. And they're going to use their long prehensile trunks that will have 40,000 muscles inside to grab a hold of many different things including sand and dirt and mud and they take all of that and they throw it up onto their backs to use it as a natural shower and bug repellent since they do have very sensitive skin. Flamboyants of greater flamingos down here, which are the lightest pink and largest of the flamingo species. When all flamingos are hatched, they are going to start out great. And if we take a good hard look at the island they're on, you may notice it's in the shape of someone's head. Mickey Mouse, as it is one of the three hidden Mickeys here on this reserve. The second one, if you're interested, comes up pretty quickly here. It's a lot harder to spot because it is carved into the backside of a rock on the right. So it's not going to be on the back of the pounds, each one fully grown, much more social than a black rhino. So they do spend more of their lifetime together in small family groups. And they do, however, have extremely bad eyesight, much worse than mine. And unlike me, they can't exactly wear glasses all day long. So they do have to highly rely on sounds and smells to navigate their world. But as you can see, they're not actually white, they're gray in color, so they did get their name from the mistranslation of the Afrikaans word fight, which will mean wide and not white. That's going to be in reference to the wider, broad-shaped mouth they carry, whereas black rhinos have more upper-pointed prehensile lip. But none of the rhinos have any natural predators in the wildlife. Their biggest threat comes from poaching, as they are poached for their horns, believing they have medicinal properties to them. But they're made of nothing other than keratin, just like our hair and fingernails. Up ahead here to the hill on the left, you'll be able to spot a cheetah roaming around along the back. 
after that, it's going to take them about 40 minutes to be able to fully touch their breath again. They use their stringy long tails to help them keep their balance and control their direction while running at their top speed. They're going to have some pretty good eyesight thanks to the black tear marks on their faces, which will help to reflect the sun and keep it out of their eyes. Now, they're built for speed and not for power, so they will often get chased off by lions and hyenas. African painted dogs and many other predators who make about hunting at the same time as them. Their only advantage is that they mostly hunt during the day, while everyone else goes to sleep on spare nights. To the left there, you will see our African lions. They are generally pretty lazy animals, spending about 16 to 20 hours of their day sleeping and lying around. The females come out, they take care of all the hunting while the male, he's going to stay behind because he's going to need to protect the rest of the pride, including all the cubs. If there's currently no cubs within the pride, he'll gladly go out and help with the hunt, but it can be quite difficult for him to hunt with speed and accuracy, as his mane can weigh up to about 40 to 90 pounds when it's fully grown out. They do have extremely great eyesight, very similar to ours during the day. At night, it's going to be in by about four to six times brighter. And their roar can be heard up to about six miles away. Trust me, you're going to want to hear this. smaller of the two, weighing in at about 3,000 pounds each one fully grown. but they're going to hail all the way out from West Africa. They're going to be spending most of their day grazing on the grass, taking as many naps as they'd like. They will, however, provide our warden with milk, and we can take their sweet goat milk, which will be rich in protein, and turn it into many other dairy products that can be sold and consumed, helping to protect the wildlife, as it is going to make it much less necessary to need to go out and hunt for any other food sources. that's going to mark our exit out of the reserve at the end of our time. If anyone has that opportunity to come back and visit us again, please do as much as the birds would ever be the same. You never know what animals are going to be out, what they'll be doing or what fast for even on that time around. I also highly recommend you take the time head through the Gorilla Falls Exploration Trail. It's going to be a self-guided walking trail. I'll take you about 15 to 20 minutes to go through. You can spend as little or as much time on the trail as you'd like. It's however about a half mile walking trail, so parents I do highly recommend you take your strollers for the little ones. Anyone needing wheelchairs, used to be scooters, or anything else with wheels, gotta take all with you as the trail is fully accessible. <laughs> And while you're on that Gorilla Falls Trail, you'll be able to see some similar types of animals that we saw out here this morning, amongst many others, like naked mole rats. They're a family of western lowland gorillas, and there's an underwater viewing area of some of those Nile hippos. Yeah, friends, the good news is for anyone wishing to go through the Gorilla Falls Trail, we're going to be heading back to the exact same dock 
you got on it. Oh. And that knob's gonna let out right at the entrance of the trail. So if you wanna go through your roller falls, all you have to do is take a left turn at the bottom of the exit ramp. It'll take you right through the entire trail. But no worries, if you don't wish to do Gorilla Falls, just take a turn to the right. It's going to take you right back out to the village and to the rest of the park to continue on with your day. Keeping your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the train. Sit all the way back against the bench, and please be sure to watch your children. Assign it. Bienvenidos a bordo de Wildlife Express. Para que tengan un viaje seguro, manténganse sentados, con las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del tren. Siéntense hasta atrás, pegados al respaldo de la banca. Y por favor, vigilen a los niños. Gracias.
and welcome aboard the Wildlife Express. We hope you enjoyed your visit to Rafiki's Planet Watch. We are now beginning our return trip to the African town of Harambe. For your safety, please remain seated and keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the train. Sit all the way back against the bench, and please, be sure to watch your children. Bienvenidos. Comenzamos ahora nuestro viaje de regreso a la aldea africana de Arambe. Para su seguridad, permanezcan sentados con las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del tren. Siéntense hasta atrás, pegados al respaldo de la banca. Y por favor, vigilen a los micrófonos. Gracias. Welcome aboard the Wildlife Express. Service from Rafiki's Planet Watch to the village of Harambe. As you head back out into Disney's Animal Kingdom, we hope you take with you a great appreciation for the very journey that led us.
cuide a sus niños y disfruten del viaje. Thank you. 
Dr. Marsh, director of the Dino Institute, and I hope you enjoyed those quaint exhibits in the old wing. That's how dinosaurs have been presented to the public since the study of fossils began over 150 years ago. Today that bare bones approach is about to become extinct. In a perfect blending of science and technology, the Dino Institute has created the Time Rover, an amazing vehicle that will literally transport you to the age of the dinosaurs. How? That's proprietary. But the result is a breathtaking journey through a prehistoric world where you'll witness the most spectacular creatures to ever walk the earth. In a moment, you'll be going live to our control center for a comprehensive safety briefing, and then it's on to the tour that will convince you forever that the future is truly in the past. Hello there. Welcome to our little trans-dimensional joyride, folks. I'm Dr. Seeker, your friendly controller, and a heck of a paleontologist, if I do say so myself. But let's not talk about me. Let's talk about you. And how you can help me make history today with the Time Rover. It's like this. If I can bring you back from the Cretaceous period, it stands to reason that I can bring back a live dinosaur with you. And not just any dinosaur. Take a look at this guy. He's an iguanodon, and I'm certain that he has the key to understanding these magnificent creatures. I tagged him with a locator during an unauthorized field trip. Otherwise, I'd be traveling with you. Right now, our dino should be about here, at the very end of the Cretaceous period. That's where you're going today. I've arrived, it seems, just in time to correct a little misstatement. Dr. Marsh. That is impossibly close to the giant asteroid impact that destroyed most life forms on Earth. Our tools are designed to take you to the early Cretaceous period. And I can assure you that all time rovers have been securely locked on those coordinates. That's right. See? Securely locked. Access denied. <laughs> Continue. Of course. We were just talking about seatbelts. Plug them in, use them. It can get kind of choppy out there, so keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. Flash photography? I wouldn't. It alters the homing signal and that's not good. Oh, and one more thing. Those locked coordinates? Access. We're in. Now, here's the drill. You follow the homing signal to the iguanodon, then I'll enlarge the transport field and boom, you're back with one additional passenger extra large. And don't worry about that asteroid. You'll be in and out of there before it even breaks the atmosphere. Trust me, what could go wrong? Hey, it's me again. Remember, only you guys are going on this special mission, so don't tell anyone. <laughs> 
Okay? Time travel commencing in T minus 10 seconds and counting. This is Seeker. Listen up. We've got to get in, grab the Iguanodon, and get out before the asteroid hits. Let's roll! Let's go get that dino. Computer, what are you tracking? Styracosaurus. Not our dino. Warning, meteor shower in range. Just little one. Oleoramus. Hadrosaur. Raptor. Time to get serious. Lock the autopilot on homing signal now. I'm tracking a big dino on the scope. Could be ours. Computer, full stop. Identify. Carnotaurus. Definitely not our dino. Go, go, go! Another big guy coming up. Computer. Slow and identify. Sarapod. Still not our dino, but at least this one's a vegetarian. Para su seguridad, permanezca sentado con el cinturón de seguridad ajustado y mantenga las manos, brazos, pies y piernas dentro del dinosaurio. Cuide a los pequeñitos. Gracias. Riders in the front row can use their lever to fly higher or lower. Riders in the back row can use their lever to tilt forward or backward. Ready? Then let's go for a spin.
it's been. Now, please stay seated until your Triceratops comes to a complete stop. Then, make sure you have all your belongings and walk to the exit gate.